Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sebring. Uh, it is a slightly overcast. There's a bit of Simpsons cloud uh, in the sky uh, for our third round, our third race of the 2021 Edebitter Mazda MX-5 Cup presented by BF Goodrich Tyres. Uh, we weren't expecting to be here, but a bit of time opened up on the schedule and those racers at Mazda just decided it would be a great idea to come to the original home of the US Grand Prix and where sports cars live uh, in America. 17 corners, uh, three and three quarter miles, a nice mix of turn names and name names. And when you've got Gurney and Fangio and Bishop and Le Mans and Christensen, you know that a place has got history. Sunset at turn 17, that'll be an action area. I sort of suspect we might see something uh, going on at uh, turn seven into the happen in front of the hotel as well. Insanely quick through turn one. Sebring, hashtag respect the bumps. That's what we always say. Bit of a change for the uh, non-WeatherTech Sports Car Championship events uh, this weekend in that they are out of the World Endurance Championship pits that were constructed a couple of seasons ago. No WEC here this year because of the global situation, which is why that time opened up on the schedule. Well, if you are just joining us and you're not sure what to expect, Take a deep breath before we go green because that might be the last one you get for the next 45 minutes after the green flag. I'm John Hindorf and joining me is sports car expert and part of our Radio Le Mans and IMSA Radio team. She's been prowling the paddocks and patrolling the pit lanes around the world for such a long time. I don't even ask. Shea Adam is with me. Looking forward, I presume, Shea, to another couple of fabulous races this weekend. Bouncing up and down with anticipation. Cannot wait to get this one green. The first race of the Sebring 12-hour weekend, and it's Mazda's. Does life get any better than that? Nope, I don't think so. The Mazda MX-5 RF the safety car is rolling out the pit lane. Note it's painted in the same colours or wrapped in the same colours as the DPI that will be racing in the Mobile One 12 hours of Sebring this weekend. Hopefully, as much as I like the look of it, in fact, that isn't an RF. That is a, a Cabriolet. My apologies. Um, hopefully, we won't see that again. Nice, though it is. Uh, let's take a look at how everybody qualified for this. As you might imagine, it was very, very tight uh, indeed at the sharp end of the field. Spark Performance and Gresham Wagner in the number five car on pole position by fractions of a second from McCombie McAleer Racing's number 28, Sam Purley. Then it's Michael Carter and Drake Kemp with the 08 and the 99. Carter Racing Enterprise and Provision Motorsport LLC cars share row two. Row three, uh, Celine Roland for the Hickson Motorsports keep and Justin Piscatel alongside in P6 with the 89 at McCombie McAleer Motorsports Racing. Next row back, the fourth row, Daniel Williams and Luke Mars, 38 and 41, make it an all Copeland Motorsports row. Then it's all JTR behind them as Chris Nains and Jared Thomas in the 32 and 96 are in P9 and 10. Just outside the top 10, Provision Motorsports have another one of their cars. This is the 96 car, excuse me, this is the 24 car of Aaron Johnson and Brian Ortiz from Copeland in the four is alongside. Moise Oretsky is in the 55 in 13th for McCombie McAleer. His teammate Jensen Altman, remember he brought out the uh, full course yellow at the end of the second race at Daytona. That red, white and blue number 13 McCombie McAleer racing starts in 14th position. It's another McCombie McAleer teammate, Zach Lee, who is in 15th position alongside him, Joey Atanasio for provision. Team Guatemala, Juan Hernandez in 17th position with Todd Buras for Irish Mike's Racing. Mm. And it's St. Patrick's Day yesterday. 
could they have a bit of the look of the Irish and see him come forward. Slip spin performance provide the next three on the grid. Hernan Palermo is in P19. David Stab in P20. And Alex Pachura in P21 on the inside of the 11th row. He's got Brian Hickson from Hickson Motorsports uh, for company. 22 at uh, 23rd position, Lonnie Unser uh, for Hickson Motorsports. Jean Jordan uh, in the... Uh, Jean Jodouin in the 24th position uh, in the 31 car for McCumbie. Then it's two more Hicksons, Savannah Little and Dan Moen. Uh, and then Mike Globe for Slipstream is in 27th position. He may not stay there because I have a strong suspicion that there will be a lot, and I mean a lot, going on. Spark Performance then leading the field for Gresham Wagner. And uh, Sam Perley alongside in the 28 car. So it's the bright red car that leads them out. Uh, they're getting heat into the BF Goodridge tyres. Uh, Shea Adam points up for grabs early in the season. Always good. It's like any sport. Get the get your uh, get your numbers on the board early on. And with over 500,000 dollars up for grabs that has never been more true is it is here in the Edom 2 MX5 Cup and not just the points for the win uh, there are 60 bonus points available across the two races over the weekend how do we score those you score them by either getting the pole position well that's already been attained for both races but the 10 points going the way of Gresham Wagner for this one you lead the most laps that gets 10 points and you have the fastest race lap so in effect 20 bonus points for the contenders to go out and grab in this one and Gresham Wagner the man on pole has the points lead after Daytona to his name so that's a new CX30 that's leading the cars round. Drove the MX30, the new all-electric Mazda, earlier on today. And my goodness me, that has the absolute soul of a Mazda and is very drivable indeed. 45 minutes on the clock. The green flag is in the air and round three of the Edomitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup is underway. And just a six wide across the start-finish line as they head into the first corner with Gresham Wagner just about holding on to the lead, coming through from the second row. The second of the red and white cars is Michael Carter in the 0-8 for Carter Racing Enterprises. Has he elbowed his way through? He has into second place. That looks like Drake Kemper is following him through there as well. So already the man who started on the outside of the front row, Sam Pierce for McCumbie, McAleer Racing is dropping back just a little bit. He'll not be pleased with that through Big Bend and under the relatively recent addition of the two-way Corvette drive over bridge. The whole field goes through and the engines, two-litre, sealed stock engines. But the only thing that is stock other than the shape of the bodywork. The Fliss Performance guys take the cars when they come into the US, into their facility up at Daytona strip them back to pretty much their component parts and there's more than 250 specific racing items get bolted in but the engine is exactly the same as your street MX-5 top three getting away then fourth position the number 32 leads the next group back everybody just settling in there's really not much time even in this 45-minute race, and certainly no time to let the leaders get away. I'm desperate to see what happens here when we head down the Ullman Street, the back straight here for the first time, and whether there is a big enough hole in the air being punched by these open-top MX-5s to have the draft to get down to the right-hand side, the inside, into Turn 17. There is a hard charger award for the most cars passed during every race, but right now my hard charger is Celine Rowland. This kid who is from Central Florida, by the way, makes his home in Orlando. He is moving up through the field, qualified in fifth, now running in third, but he is looking at the lead and running a very special livery this weekend for the Hicks Motorsport crew. Autism Speaks, it's near and dear to his heart as he spent a lot of time with autistic kids down the inside, there is that number 28 car, the dark car of Sam Pearley. Lost a bit of real estate at the start. De determined to try and fight his way back. And as they stream across the line, the leaders have already gone through. And it's now the battle for fourth position. 
that is uh, keeping our interest. Purely then, just managing to get back to that front of the group. That's Chris Nunes and Grit Drake Kemp. And Justin Piscatel in there as well, I just noticed going through in the uh, number seven, McCombie McAleer Racing, another one of the leading lights from the first couple of races. Top ten, Aaron Janson and then it's Thomas and Atanasio, JTR Provision cars as well in the top ten. Well, a pretty speedy breakaway at the front of the field with Gresham Wagner in that red fronted car with the white and black through the hairpin for the second time of asking. Good start by Michael Carter in the 08. Michael was so buzzed up about winning at Daytona. Real fan of stock car racing. And Drake Kemper. Uh, being shown has stopped. If you're following along on timing and scoring, being shown has stopped. He is still running. I saw him in the background. I wonder when he went wide at turn one there if he might have shed the automatic transponder. Well, our timing crew at Alcamel can keep an eye on that manually if possible. It's quite surprised here to see this top three breaking away a little bit this early on. We're barely five minutes into the race. Yeah, me too. And they are the three that we associate right now with being the championship contenders. Gresham Wagner leading the points. Of course, it was Michael Carter who scored the other win at Daytona and then Sullen Roland, who has been a consistent contender for the championships ever since. But they have really started to run away from everyone else. And the other thing, these are three cars that are running not with their teammates uh, in one case, in uh, the case of Michael Carter, he doesn't have a teammate. So you really have to work with those around you, but it's more unfortunate if you're trying to beat those around you in the championship. Well, that's not Sam in fourth position now. He's dropped down to seventh position. A little bit of a schmozzle maybe uh, around the back of the circuit. That looked to me as though that is Justin Piscatel who's got through in the blue car into fourth, confirmed as they cross the line. Then names. Then Janson, then uh, Sam Pearley, then Atanasio, Joy sitting in there as well, in eighth position. Oh, intake of breath from both of the commentators here as they go through turn one. What a sight that is. They don't call this the best value in racing for no reason. And it's always somebody to battle with. And right at the front of the field here, what have we got now? Getting on for eight, maybe ten cars, battling from Piscatel all the way down to, well, I think Jensen Ultzman is just about on the, the back of that, and he is, that is in 12th position in the number 13 car, so he's made up a couple of spots. Teams tell us it costs about $150,000 to run for the season, and there's big cash, real cash, folding tank money up for grabs, Share if uh, you can take home one of the big prizes. We'll get to that in a moment as there's a charge for, through from third to second and now to the lead. Selim Rolat has gone through. That's a beautiful piece of driving dealt with Michael Carter earlier in the lap and now goes past Gresham Wagner. As we have seen though, Eve, on, Eve Shea, excuse me, on the uh, high banks of Daytona, uh, sometimes it's not the best place to be in the front of the field. Our leader coming to the end of the first race of the season ended up in seventh position. How much are these guys fighting? How much are they just weighing each other up? Because they're not really slowing each other down at the moment. They're pulling away from fourth on back. Nah, John, it's bonus points. It's bonus points. You get 10 points for the most lap led, and Celine Roland knows that, and he knows how to get championships because he's been third in points last year. He's run on the E-Series, but he is training to be a pilot. He wants the pride of saying, hey, Sebring International Raceway, Sebring International Airport, I led there. Hendrik failed, of course, back as the World War II training base. Beautiful dive down the inside at turn 10. And Roland now leads it coming onto the start-finish line, just under 38 minutes to go. Shea Adam and John Hindorf with the call for you in round three of the Edomitsu. Mazda MX-5 Cup for 2021. Back in the IMSA paddock, 
back with the sports car racing fans who are out in force here in Florida and they'll be loving this as well. Big fan favourites. They sound great, great, these four-cylinder inline engines being revved within an inch of their life. They love to rev. Fantastic cars and very drivable indeed. Sadev sequential gearbox now. Slightly different from when I drove one at Road Atlanta a few years ago when they still had the age pattern box. These, make no mistake about it, uh, it might be the best value in racing. That's what everybody tells us. But these are proper, proper racing cars. No corners cut in terms of safety and the performance that the drivers are enjoying uh, at the moment. With the three leaders still very much together. Is Roland just pulling away a tiny bit there, Shea? I, 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 I dare say that as they break again on the far side of the circuit. Everybody trackside, that's magnificent stuff. They really are entertaining already, and we've got more than half an hour of this to go. And uh, no, it's probably not going to be a lead for very long. As Gretchen Wagner gets uh, caught up briefly by Michael Carter. He has to look in his rearview mirror and let like, Celine run away just a little bit, but now Celine is caught right back up. These three are dicing back and forth to try and lead, and it's all because at the end of the year, you get a quarter million dollars for winning the championship, and you get money all the way down to 10th. It is worth saying that $80,000 for the rookie of the year. Not one of these drivers is eligible for that, but still, this is the kind of thing that can make your career. Winning this championship is a launching point for further racing. And in the meantime, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Well, and we're starting to see now, aren't we? Drivers choosing not to move on. They want to continue in this. They have a lot of fun. It's the, the value proposition, the true essence of sports car racing in effect, because basically the nut behind the wheel is what makes the difference. This is all about racecraft. And with the kind of financial reward that Mazda has put into this championship and increased again in 2021, then there's no reason, if you don't want to, to move on. And we've seen career drivers, in fact, let's be honest, people are pocketing hundreds of thousands of dollars here for consistently winning various championships. The top three are back together again. And I said, foolishly, that I thought Gresham Wagner might be dropping back a little bit at Christensen Curve, turn three. He dives up the inside and goes back in front. Sort of reminds me of a, a breakaway in a long classic tour bicycle race here. It looks like everybody's taking a turn at the front. So far, Michael Carter uh, has not been at the front, but he's sitting in third position. In the 05, the white car with the red uh, hood, bonnet and trunk boot. International audience here, just mind everybody. And those three at the moment are sitting round right about three and a half seconds from Piscatel in the blue car in fourth position. And we have got times for him now. So whatever was uh, ailing him on the timing screen was only that. And one, two, three wide behind. Oh my goodness me, this could get very expensive very quickly down the inside for Chris Noons. He was defending his position there in behind Piscatel, trying to go through. Now, that's really, really interesting. Fantastic piece of driving. Noons, Janson, Paley, Kemper, Thomas, all in that little gap and sitting at the back, the 96 there. That is Thomas in the GTR Motorsports machine. But they're not pulling the leaders in. Crucially, he is shit as the new leader of that group is Aaron Janson. He is not pulling them back. Piscatel in the blue car with the yellow wheels, now in fifth position. And these guys, I don't think they're doing themselves any good in terms of getting closer to a podium position, Shea. No, they're not. They're going to need a safety car, or some sort of intervention to oh, help go, get them back up. But the good news is that Provision Motorsport have two cars together because Drake Kemper is behind, so Aaron Johnson not out there completely alone. We have had two penalties, by the way, for false starts eliciting drive throughs Joey Exnacio was already in the pit lane in the third Provision Motorsports MX-5, but he'll need to do another trip back down. And the other car being Dan Williams, currently running in the 10th position, having been deemed to have jumped the start. Down to turn one, just over half an hour to go across the line. Gresham Wagner for Spark Performance. 
still leading it. In behind in second place, Salim Roland. This is fantastic risk. Oh, bit of a slide there by the leader. Does that mean the BF Goodridges are being asked to do a little bit too much on the back of that car? Watch out for the bright coloured 99 in the middle of that pack. That is Drake Kemper. And he is right behind Piscatel now in that, we call that a mauve car. It's not maroon, is it? It's sort of chrome pink. It's not just oh, pink, it is it? It's properly from Pink, and that's exactly what we come to expect from Drake Kemper. Winner here in 2015 in race number one. Drake Kemper knows how to get it done. And by the way, if you want a little bit of comedy, look Drake Kemper up on IMDb. He was a child actor on certain networks, and those pictures still do exist, and he's not shy about them either. Drake is a perfect example, John, of what you were talking about. Drivers who want to stay in this series, because when you master driving the MX-5 Cup car, well, you're good for life. Yeah, and it is such good racing right in front of the big endurance crowds now as well at Daytona, at Sebring. And they'll be going through the year to our season finale for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship at, at Road Atlanta. And these cars around there are spectacular. No, strike that. These cars around any track are spectacular. The fastest lap of the weekend at Daytona International Speedway. Remember, these are stock engines. No tuning applied to the engines at all. Well, the fastest lap of the weekend at Daytona was more than 100 miles an hour average. <laughs> I'm just pausing to let that sink in there. And thankfully, the top three didn't go bonkers on me and decide to change... <laughs> Uh, the positions. More penalties coming in. Shea Adam, what do you have? When was the last time you heard of a penalty being rescinded? Joey Atanasio not deemed guilty for the start, so the 43 does not need to come back down the pit lane provision. Keep your guy out there. Dan Williams is serving the penalty right now. And the four of Brian Ortiz, former series champion back in 2019. He has been deemed guilty of the false start and needs to do a drive through. Respect the bumps at Sebring. Uh, and by the way, that Williams car has been in and out. And remember, that was on the Ullman straight. That's not on the start-finish line. So if you did see that car dive in, that's why they are pitting in the WEC pits on the back straight, the Ullman straight. So four is Aaron Johnson in the provision motorsport, the dark red. So red crystal, such a Mazda colour. Has to... Oh, I was thought he was going to go down the inside, but the inside was already filled up by Chris Nains. And he goes through and takes that fourth position, the first of the second group, if you will. Justin Piscatel was getting squeezed, so just drove on the grass. Oh, you can squeeze me. You can squeeze, squeeze me if you want, Aaron, but I'm staying right here. And they're still side by side as they come to turn 10, sitting right in uh, behind them. As well there is that number 96 car. That's the Thomas JTR Motorsports machine. And then Drake Kemper and Sam Peely, or should I say Sam Peely and Drake Kemper are just in behind them as well. No, it is Drake Kemper, yes, who's next up in that chrome pink car. So this little battle pack has broken up a little bit, but they are still dropping away. It's more than five seconds now to the front of the field and this battling shit it's it's absolutely classic isn't it when you're battling when you're looking for position you're not driving the ultimate perfect racing line and that's what's letting the leaders get away and now it also looks like Jean Sant's getting away as well this is mega I mean it's often referred to as the best value in racing it's also the best value in entertainment you get in racing when it's this kind of result and you have to look beyond what we're actually seeing because Jared Thomas who was back in the fourth place in that little group car number 96 his teammate was Chris Nunes who made the brilliant move several corners before he needs to get up to Chris so that the two of them can work together to try and get up to this front pack so he's saying to John Somme and to Piscatel hey move over move over I gotta get with him so we can go move move you can follow behind us just move <laughs> yeah, you see, that sounds easy for us here in the comms box to say that, Shea, but they've got to work this out whilst on the bumps of Sebring, whilst battling for every inch of tarmac and classic 
concrete of this historic Sebring International Raceway. Thank goodness these cars have the Multimatic DSSV dampers. Uh, this is the very clever damping system from the Multimatic Engineering Concern. And these are, I suppose you'd say, this is the, the uh, most cost-effective way to get that suspension system on any race car. And uh, known around the world, Multimatic, for how clever they are with chassis damping and design. And, of course, they are the power behind the chassis development of the Mazda DPI car that will be racing here this weekend in the hands of Ollie Jarvis and Harry Tinknell. Top three still tied together with very short bungee cords. Back at the front, Gresham Wagner for Spark Performance. And Spark Performance is the concern, the racing concern of someone who knows this championship very well indeed, Jim. That would be the 2016 champion, Nathaniel Sparks, affectionately known as Sparky, winner of this race. The last time the MX-5 Cup cars took a green and then a checkered flag on this track was 2018. Race one that weekend was won by Yumi Tsusumi, by the way, a name that is familiar to us uh, from a long time ago. But Gresham Wagner, the representative for Spark Performance this weekend, he had a lot of bad luck in 2020, but said he wasn't going to leave his team because he thought that they were the right match for him. He's a graduate of CNU. He stayed pretty close to home. His dad and brother both went there. And he went for business. Well, he's taking care of the business end of things out on track right now, trying to rack up as many points as he can. So far, he's got the fastest, uh, excuse me, the most laps led. He's got the pole position, but the fastest lap right now, that is going to the pink car of Drake Kemper. Who was ninth across the line last time around, but who knows where he'll be this time under or on at least the 25-minute mark. Out from the draft, out from the slipstream, second place car. Salim Roland tries to have a look down into Turn 1. It's not a big braking area, Turn 1, for these cars. You can see they're barely scrubbing off any speed at all before they turn on. Hearing this debris on track in Turn 17 will keep an eye on that. Oh, very wide indeed. Very wide indeed for Luca Mars, who has gone way off. And in that dust, is there another car behind there? I think yeah. there is shit. There's Jensen That's... Altman, who's off the track too, but that was the 41 of Luca Morris who took the brunt of the impact. Ah, the Jensen as well, Altman. Oh. That's two races in a row. He's had contact with something solid whilst he was running in 11th position. Mars goes wide on the bumps of turn one, and it looked for a moment as though he had it, and mm. poor Jensen is a passenger at that, and they are both in the wall, drivers left after turn one so easy to be all the committed through turn one we said just seeing how fast it was when luca mars loses it i think you know what i'll take that back i'm not sure jensen did actually hit the tires but luca mars has had heavy contact and unsurprisingly with chassis and or with uh, suspension damage should i say it, uh, it looks like his race is run and we have a full course yellow Jensen hasn't got very much further around either. So maybe he did clip the tyres. Hard to see whether it was just the contact from the 41 of Mars or whether he actually made contact with the blue and white banders tyres. Such a shame for Jensen at Shea because he was having a good run there, knocking on the door of the top ten. He really was, and it does look like he has some right front suspension damage on that aero car of running from a Cumbi McAleer Racing. He chose that team because it was so highly recommended by other people in the paddock. And he should know about people in the paddock, his great uncle, none other than Elliot Forbes Robinson. So he does have quite a bit of racing in his blood. Currently a student at ASU, Arizona State University, studying business marketing. And he's a guy who, John, this is only his third car race. He car debuted in 2021. Elliot Forbes Robinson, the inaugural American Le Mans Series champion back in 1999 uh, and has been part of the IMSA officiating team for quite some time. And 
as we're in a full course caution, just take a moment. Before this race start, there was a minute's silence because of the sad death of Mike Pasquale, who has been an MX5 official since the very beginning of the MX5 Cup Series in 2006. Uh, a man who almost constantly had a smile on his face. Always a lovely bloke to speak to in the paddock and had a word for everybody and a smile for most. Even when he was telling them bad news, he managed to do it with a smile on their face. Very few people in that officiating position that the teams didn't mind them coming down to see him and Mike was certainly like that. He's simply irreplaceable and uh, we mourn him as does the MX5 Cup family and the larger racing community. Uh, send our condolences and thoughts to his immediate family of course and his many friends in motorsport here in the Edamitu Mazda MX5 paddock and further beyond that too. Full course caution for the third round of the Mazda MX-5 Cup here at uh, Sebring. First race of the weekend. And clean-up going on. The AMR safety crew there very quickly. Luca Mars with his end speed to turn one. BF Goodrich tyres are fabulous. When they're on the track, um, Paris Dakar tyres they aren't, and he was wearing the sand right there. And just speeding across it, uh, Jensen Ultimate. And into the tyres, Jensen uh, bravely trying to get the car back. Ah, it was uh, right front steering arm actually that I think has caused him the issue superficial damage which I'm sure the team will sort out for him Company Macalea Racing will be on that as soon as the car is back the good news both drivers out of their cars and moving well just underlining the build quality and the safety standards for the Edermitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup cars just uh, Note that we are in Women's Awareness Month here and new initiative for 2021 uh, in Mazda is the uh, Women's Awareness Programme and we have uh, Women's Hith History Month, uh, should I say it. And the awareness programme in MX5 very much working well with, uh, in fact, a whole team worth of female drivers. Of course, neither the car, the track, or nor the stopwatch knows or cares. But it's it's good to see, Shea, that uh, there's plenty going on in this paddock. Yeah, and for Hicks and Motorsports, uh, the goal is to become the most prolific in terms of wins in this championship and Brian Hickson who only began the team a little over a year ago has already gone well on his way to doing that running both Lonnie Unser and Savannah Little I'll talk about Savannah first because I find her story so much fun uh, she won the $75,000 scholarship this year she's driving the number 63 MX5 Cup car currently in the 20th position. It's been a little bit of a difficult weekend. They were having some issues in practice one, and then they think they got them sorted for practice two fully, but then didn't quite get the draft for qualifying. Her life has been training horses as her day job. She actually sold her last horse to be able to put a roll cage in her first race car. She started racing in Texas, where she's from, Austin, Texas, in 2017, and her goal is to climb the sports car ladder VP Fuels has actually come on board as one of her sponsors lately, but she got into racing through modeling. It's not the typical route that you go. She was standing in front of the cars and then realized that she wanted to drive the cars. And she's been doing a great job of that so far this year with two good results at Daytona. But her teammate, Lonnie Unser, yes, from the Unser family, 
What a nice young woman. I've talked to her a couple of times on the phone. Uh, the daughter of Johnny, her dad was spotter for her at Daytona, but it wasn't a great race at Daytona. Two mechanical issues that took her out of those two races. Now, you'll notice her car number 92. It's the one that has the dragon on the side. The dragon has a name. His name is Marvin. I just learned that, which makes me very, very happy. But her goal in life is to have a successful racing career, climb the IMSA ladder, and then someday become the next Herman Tilka. She went to school for environmental design because she wants to design racetracks. I just love this girl. I can't wait to see what she can do in the MX-5 cars. And right now she's running in 16th in that blue MX-5 Cup car. Ahead of her, her team owner, Brian Hickson. So they can work together. Let's see how far up the ladder we can get. Yeah, Lonnie, uh, as she said, didn't uh, get the best of it. Uh, at uh, Daytona with uh, a lurid spin at the exit of the bus stop. Very high speed there. Uh, did well to keep the car up the, the wall, but that was a, a mechanical issue, and the team worked very hard indeed uh, to get her back out onto the track. I might have known you would know the name of the dragon. So it's Marvin. <laughs> Marvin the dragon. Okay. Isn't that fabulous? Marvellous Marvin the Dragon in that 90, on that 92. Uh, sitting uh, ahead is that uh, police cruiser coloured car. That is the uh, team owner that uh, she was talking about. That's not for a bit of fun, by the way. Uh, Blue Help is the charity there helping uh, serving law enforcement officers and their families deal with the extreme stresses and strains uh, of... Uh, life on the street uh, and they uh, are trying to, to help people when they are at their lowest ebb really fantastic program ran a couple of cars in that livery and as someone who came from a police family in the UK I can only applaud them uh, for that good to know they're helping the families out as well great social responsibility in motor racing and Itamitsu MX5 Cup is no exception. 6.30 back at the front of the field, one of the new look Mazdas for 2021 and in the absolute business as it leads the field round looks like we're not too far away from going back to green once again our track services Safety uh, and other officials have done a cracking job. And let's give them their due credit as well. All the volunteers who make every motor racing event work simply couldn't do it without you. Whether you're a flagger, whether you're driving a truck, whether you're helping people park cars, frankly, away from the circuit, thank you so much for giving your time. down towards the hairpin with just under 15 minutes to go and this has brought the field back together again Shea you were seeing that the second group which Chris Nunes had uh, fought his way to the front of before that yellow flag ahead of Jared Thomas and then Justin Piscatel uh, Johnson, Aaron Johnson in at now seventh position but Drake Kemp is right there he's still got the fastest lap and now we get to do a start all over again now in fairness it will be a single file start when they come around this time but I think you've got to be looking down the field here to see if someone could get a run into the very fast turn one yeah you've got three outliers in the first three positions they're effectively running on their own then fourth Chris Noons with Jared Thomas right behind him his ally and teammate on the racetrack then you go back to Justin Piscatel again on his own and then Aaron Johnson and Drake Kemper both for provision Good motorsport point. this is going to be wild with all the teammates together can they work together to get around cars uh yeah yeah that's very interesting Shea, because single car teams obviously you, you're not going to get any drafting help uh, from those around you when you come down to the money laps whereas the drivers you've mentioned fourth and fifth that's the ninth uh, the 32 and the 96 uh, and in seventh and eighth that's the dark red number 24 and the 99 
of Drake Kemp, and that's the pink car. They are going to be able to do something, at least. Uh, of course, when you get to the last lap and the last corner of the last lap, all bets are off, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's fair to say. 12 and a half minutes to go. It's going to be round about a round dozen minutes to get us to the end of this race. The safety car will push on and disappear back into the pit lane and we'll go green again for the dash for the points. Gresham Wagner then controls the field in the Spark performance. Red, white and black Mazda MX-5. He's got his foot down early through turn 17, but he's dragging Celine Roland along with him and there's Carter. They've got away again. The top three have got away again. Everybody else was sleeping. Jared Thomas goes up into fourth across the line. Chris Nunes did not get a good restart there. And the top three have done exactly what they did at the drop of the green. And a spin further down the field. That's Nunes that's gone around. I said he hadn't had a good start. Maybe just lost a bit of temperature and pressure from his PF Goodrich tyres. Back end got away from him wide in turn one. He has rejoined, but he's lost a huge amount of places. Dropped way back down the field. May have just tagged the right rear of his Mazda MX-5 and JTR Motorsports will have a wee bit of work to do before that car comes out for race two. Leading trio at the hairpin. I promise you, they have got exactly the same package, but they were in the pull away. That's very unusual. Yes, he did go backwards into the tyres. Do you know, I'm not sure we've still ever found anything that's better than, than banded tyres to dissipate energy. He bounced off that, snicked the sad F box down into first and pulled away. And he hit that pretty square shear. I think he might have got away with that. Yeah, and how many race cars do you know that you can throw backwards into the tires at probably 75 miles an hour and they can drive right back out and keep going around the track? Yeah. I mean, these Mazdas are incredible machines. Very tough indeed, leaders. Once again, through to the Le Mans Benz and the Jean de Bian area of the circuit before they turn right handed onto the back straight, just through the serpentine section now with the Jean de Bian Benz. And now through turn 16 onto that back straight. Really important corner and a really good entry, middle and exit for Gresham Wagner. He knows he's making the hole in the air, so he had to be quick there. Minimum corner speed through there is pretty quick and you've got to try and edge as much as you can. Here comes Roland down the right-hand side. The inside into the next right-handed corner at sunset. Turn 17, right to the wall. Then let it breathe, then drag it back. There's a big bump right underneath the bridge. And look at that, the right-hand front BF Goodridge of the leader clawing at the air and getting no grip whatsoever. Everything's going on the left front and the left rear as they come through turn 17. Michael Carter, haven't talked about him for a while, but he's still there possibly still the man most likely and it's Jared Thomas who's made the break in fourth position in the lighter coloured car it's the number 96 Piscatel is the next car back I think watch for a blue car coming through turn one yes there it is but these leading three I said I, I promised they've got the same package but you would have thought Shea Adam that they had an extra gear or an extra <laughs> you know, or an extra you know 400 cc the way they got away that was just lovely timing from wagner who dragged roland and carter with him on the restart same package different nuts behind the wheels yes. of these cars and that's what's making the difference fresh and wagner coming into this season with a very different air of confidence than he had last year only mechanical bad luck that really kept him out of the real championship hunt allowing michael carter to come through and sweep it all up and then celine roland coming in going hey guys I'm a championship contender. This is my year. You guys can move aside. I, I'm intrigued to see the different lines that the different categories of cars run through turn 17. The IMSA WeatherTech cars who are out on the circuit just before this third round of the 2021 Edomitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup were staying away from the inside, inside wall under the bridge at turn 17. The leaders at least are getting so close that they're almost peeling their vinyl wrap off the right front wheel arch. Absolutely have to be inch perfect. They're actually letting the bump throw them away from the wall. Now, 
I know that sounds bizarre, but that means you're aiming at the wall when you turn the car in because you have to, otherwise you're too wide and a spin for the silver car in the background. That's the JTR car, the number 96. Oh no, that is such a mistake. What a mistake for Jared Thomas. He was in fourth position across the line. I think he'd already been shuffled back a little bit because Piscatel seemed to be, if not in front, certainly alongside as they were going through the Jean de Bian bends on the far side of the track. So Wagner, Roland and Carter with about two and a half seconds. This time, Wagner a little bit wider, actually, under the bridge. Watch out for the gold number 48 in that battle as well that's the mccumby mcalea racing machine another mccumby mcalea racing that's zach lee zangry lee the man from texas uh, a shrinking violet uh, i think not when you have a gold <laughs> uh, racing car you're making a statement of intent there two trios then first second and third fourth fifth and sixth piscatel jason and uh, drake kemper Still with that fastest lap, still potentially then taking away 10 bonus points to add to whatever he gets for his finishing position. Spark performance, Hicks and Motorsport, Carter Racing Enterprises, the top three teams. A little bit defensive there by the leader. Going down into the hairpin, just wandered slightly to the right into the middle of the road to discourage Celine Roland from going down the right-hand side of the road. It is very bumpy on the right there as you come into the hairpin and there's a change of surface which sometimes can unsettle a car. It's right on the racing line or the braking line rather as you're coming into that area of the track. Shea, last five minutes and this has been outstanding stuff. Everybody had a little breather for Luca Mars and Jensen Altsman. Both of those drivers, fine, walked away. That's the good news. Bit of work for both of their teams. Portland Motorsports and McCumbie McAleer Racing. It's going to be such a good day, too, for Jared Thomas Racing, JTR, with both of their cars running up in the top five on the restart. Now both of their cars down in the bottom part of the field. I'm, I'm gutted for that organization. It's Jared Thomas in the 96 is actually still on the outside of turn 15 in that silver MX-5 with the yellow roll bar on it. But I don't think we're done with Piscatel, Johnson and Kemper just yet. They're still fighting amongst themselves, but they're also dragging closer to the lead trio. Can they get there? Well, they've got less than five minutes. And we should say to all the WeatherTech team owners and the Michelin Pilot Challenge team owners, you've got about five minutes before your crews will go back to work because no one can look away from this. Oh, side by side into turn 17. That was an audacious manoeuvre for second and first position. And they're side by side again. It was the old over and under by Roland. But Carter is the one that makes up the position at the line. He goes from third to second. That was very brave by Roland. Soleil Roland tried to get the lead by going the long way around turn 17, then dragged it back in the middle part of the corner to try and get the run. Cost him a little bit of momentum. And Michael Carter took his chance with just four minutes to go. Remember, Michael captured the second race win at Daytona by making a very well-timed run to the lead just before a yellow flag came out when Jensen Altman hit the uh, turn two wall back further back down the racetrack. He knew he had to get it done within seconds and he did it. So is he timing this right again? It's been Shea Adam, a very mature drive again by Carter in second place in that 08, the mostly white car with the red and black trim. And I wonder if he's just been sitting there biding his time and saving a little bit of life in his BF Goodrich tires. Yep, I think you could be spot on for that. Remember, this is the guy who won the championship last year. He knows what a difference the money at the end of the year can make. And now, $250,000 scholarship for winning. It's well worth being patient for a couple of laps around Sebring International Raceway. Yeah, he's had a good three years, hasn't he? Winning uh, in various categories in each of the last three years in the Edemitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup and he wants to keep that winning streak going.
This top three, I don't think, are going to be caught now. There's two and a half seconds back to Piscatel in fourth, who's about three tenths ahead of Johnson and then Drake Kemper. Sam Peely, fairly lonely. He's about another three seconds further back. Irish Mike Racing. Do you remember we mentioned Irish Mike Racing at the start of this? Can you remember, without looking, I'm going to ask you this, can you remember where Irish Mike Racing started in Todd Burras? Uh, yes, 18. Yes, he did. Uh, where, where is he running now? He's in eight. Yeah. The local man from Melbourne, Florida, 2019 Spec Miata champion, an owner of a Krispy Kreme in Central Florida is currently inside the top 10, running in a team by himself. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant stuff. White flag. White flag then. So the last circuit. Oh, a bit of mistake from the leader. A little wiggle turning into the first corner from Gresham. And again, no second invitation needed by what was the second place car across the line. Carter goes through, and now it's side by side for second and third, and another mistake by Gresham Wagner. The car looks very, very slippery underneath him. He's got dirt on the tyres, and I think just going offline into turn one, he's probably picked up what we call marbles, the little bit of tyre rubber that gets scrubbed off the surface of racing tyres. And look at fourth, fifth, and sixth, they're coming back. It was two and a half seconds, it's under two seconds now. As Janson gets pushed out at turn number seven, the hairpin. It's still Piscatel in the blue car in fourth position, but now up to fifth is Drake Kemper. New fastest lap of the race on the comeback trail. Chris Dunes for JTR Motorsport in 12th position, through away fourth position, remember. Earlier on going wide at uh, turn number one. What a fantastically well-judged run then for Michael Carter. Carter Racing Enterprises, but it's not done yet. Celine Roland, who was third across the line as we started this last lap, in perfect position to try and drag past on the back straight. Yellow flag, stationary yellow flag still being shown there. That's for the JTR car of Jared Thomas, which is still sitting pretty much out of harm's way after that spin earlier on when he was in fourth. Wow, fourth has been a place that has had a bit of drama. Oh, great run. Great run again by Gresham Wagner, the third of the three cars. Third position at the moment. Piscatel could do with another lap or two, maybe. Here comes the battle for the lead down into the final corner for the final time of asking. And the man who was leading, Michael Carter, is now going to be back in second, maybe third. They all go in super deep. What a brilliant move down the inside by Gresham Wagner and somehow he's got back to the front but can he keep the car on the straight and narrow it's going to be one two three wide it's another black and finish round three of the Intermid 2 Master MX5 Cup they've all won it they've all won it it's Roland Roland has gone through Celine Roland by the narrowest measurable margin quite extraordinary as they came to the line Really impossible to tell them apart. There was a bit of paint trading going on there. How do you pick that one out? Photo finish. Carter on the far right, in the middle. Roland and Gresham Wagner. It's Roland from Carter, from Wagner in third on my timing screen at the moment. 0 0.001 of a second between first and second. We literally cannot measure it any closer than that. And Wagner, 0 0.013 of a second back in third position. Roland Carter and Wagner, your top three. Let them all stand on the top step. <laughs> Shea Adams summed that one up. The closest finish that we had had at Sebring International Raceway was in 2014 when Kenton Cook beat John Dean the second. That was 0 0.05. Here comes the battle for or 53 times more than what we just had crossing Brilliant. the start finish line. Into turn 17, Roland looked like he'd thrown it away, went in a bit deep, and a brilliant move down the right hand side by Gresham Wagner gave him the lead, but then it was well, all elbows out. Carter coming up towards the pit wall might have thought that he had a run, but it was the car in the middle 
who actually gets the win. Hicks at Motorsports take it. Celine Roland wins by 0 0.001 of a second. Then it was Carter in second for Carter Racing Enterprises. Spark Performance and Gresham Wagner, having led the vast majority of the race, comes home in third. Pick the bones out of that one. We're going to be looking at that for a very long time indeed. Not even the distance between the front of a Mazda MX-5 and the centre line of the front wheel between first and third. It was uh, Justin Piscatel who claimed fourth position, just 1.8 seconds behind at the end there. Then Drake Kemper, Aaron Johnson, uh, Sam Paley, then Irish Mike Racing. Fantastic stuff for Buras. Then Zach Lee uh, ahead of a couple of uh, or a couple of Macumbi Macalea Racing cars. Uh, then we had that was your top ten. I'm just looking down for the fastest lap. It was Chris Nunes who managed to get the fastest lap, so he'll get some bonus points. And who is the hard charger uh, award for making a position, Shit? That goes to John Joe Duane for McCumbie McAleer Racing. He started in the 24th position. He finishes in the 10th position. So that was a very good day for McCumbie McAleer, even if they didn't finish on the podium in that one. Just a, a mere 14 positions then. He would have wanted that race to just <laughs> keep going on. Well, I said take a deep breath as we went green. All right, we had a little breather in the middle for that incident between Luca Mars and... Jensen Altman, but what a phenomenal run. And now Celine Roland gets to take the Hickson Motorsport multicolored car, the jigsaw car, around to the main pit lane. And we'll try and get a word with him. He can't have known he'd won that until he was told. I, I, <laughs> and if he says anything other, I'm not going to believe him. The... Oh, yeah, had it in the bag all along. Yeah, perfectly planned. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to say that, I'll guarantee you. Heading off to the victory circle, which is behind the paddock. Let's just uh, confirm then, unofficially at least, that the results. Roland Carter, Wagner, your top three from Piscatel, Kemper, uh, Johnson, uh, Kemper, excuse me, Johnson, Peely, Buras, Zach Lee and uh, George Wayne are your top ten. The, to the winner, the spoils, the Hickson Motorsport 87 car pulls up in victory lane. Wow. It's the race series that just keeps on giving. The Itamitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup for 2021. Once again, the first race of the weekend, when you would expect everybody to be on their best behaviour because the... Uh, because the cars are needed for another race that was elbows out brilliant racing ah, the joy of driving absolutely wonderful stuff real spirit of racing in this paddock and it's working absolutely brilliantly well on its return to the IMSA paddocks now it looks like uh, Celine has got the helmet off and is ready for his close-up. <laughs> On goes the mask. Uh, should mention very strict uh, COVID protocols uh, still being uh, still being applied. Celine Roland, congratulations! You could not have known that you had won that race. What a finish again! Well. Here's the crazy thing. My radio wasn't working that race, so I really had no idea. I was calling on the radio. I was like, did I win? Did I win? Like, I didn't, I didn't know Michael was on my right side, but, oh, wow, what a crazy race. Uh, so then turn around to your right just a little bit and look at the uh, – there's a camera in the distance. The middle is not normally the place to be in the dash for the line. I don't and know. And you guys – I don't even think you traded any paint there either. That was super stuff no. from you and the two other guys. Yeah, it was clean. It was, I mean, we're all good friends. We all chatted before the race, and, you know, we did that to perfection. We got the gap, and, I mean, you know, I thought that with the double yellow it was going to be a crazy race, but we got that gap again. But, wow, what a race. And at my home track, I live in Orlando two hours away. But, wow, wow thanks to Hickson Motorsports for putting me in this car this year. It's, 
it's a great car. We've been working so hard at it, and to win at Sebring, it's such a draft track, and I mean, the car was handling the best it has all week, and wow, I'm so excited. I haven't won in a while. <laughs> That's the first race of two this weekend. You're meant to be keeping the cars in good shape. My goodness, anything could have happened there. Your heart must have been in your mouth for the whole of the last two or three laps, maybe for the whole of the race. Yeah, um, it's showing 160 BPM right now. So, you know, I mean, my heart's still pretty, pretty going. Who knows what it was? Oh, uh, there's Stu. Oh, yeah, great race. I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was awesome. Can't wait to watch the That's screen. it entertainment at its best if you just turn about a quarter turn to your right and look straight past the guy who's got the hat on there uh, that's where our camera is give us a wave magnificent stuff uh, and uh, congrats on that and we'll see you in the next race this weekend well done mate thank you thank you very much see you tomorrow uh, Aaron Johnson, the winner of round three of the Mazda Ida Mitsu Cup. First uh, race of the weekend here at Sebring after a race long battle with Michael Carter and Gresham Wagner. Bad luck for Luca Mars and particularly for Jensen Alsen, who went out of the race around about in the middle. But the top three gave us plenty of action all the way to and beyond the chequered flag. 0 0.001 of a second. And the 87 Hicks and Motorsport car comes through to win here at Seabrook.